Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother Avis, and we're back again with another episode of What's the Word Wednesdays, and this is episode 15. So, as y'all are coming in, throwing up the logo, as well as I'm putting in today's topics. But just know one thing. But you don't look like the one who collected I am immortal in the truest form, riding on sleep, never getting through the storm. But today, the topics that we are going to be getting into is we're going to be looking at current events, so what's going on around us in the world, as well as we get on the topics about death and dying. And lastly, we're going to be speaking on how your environment plays a role in your development. And once again, we have a number a number of different topics there, but you are all more than welcome to drop in your topic, to drop in what you want to say in here, because at the end of the day, this is for the community, this is for us to have conversations and talk it out, so appreciate y'all. What's up, Lyrics? Brother Lyrics in the building, how you doing? I am immortal in the truest form. So I'm going to give people some time to come in, but hope all is well, brother. Shoot, tell me, what's the word, G? And then we landed. What's up, Thorough? What's going on, brother? Peace and love. As y'all coming in, let me know what's the word, how y'all feeling. We're going to wait a few more people, and then we'll get the show started. The bear me the cold of soup. European pestilution, retribution, overdue. Execution on the sweat you losing cause you know it's true. Hate on what we make. Uh, maintaining. Hey. Brother, right now, I feel you on that maintaining. I'm doing the same. I haven't I haven't slept well the past two days. So I'm over here working on getting back on my rest as well as you know, and now you know, but creating. So Thank you for asking, G. Ooh, do their second birthday, brother. Hey, shout out second birthday. Revolving around the sun again. Peace and love. All right, let's see. So we got this ending down. We're going to get started. All right, so let's get started with the show song, and then we're going to keep it going, y'all. it out what's the word y'all what's the word 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 once again y'all welcome is your brother Avis and we're back with another episode episode 15 of what's the word Wednesdays so shout out to everyone that is here today and I am grateful for y'all coming and enjoying this moment in time with us so for today's episode we are gonna be getting in to some topics that not most people like to always talk about it's a little taboo but I think it's very, you know, important to be able to talk about these. But today, we're going to get into current events, like we usually do. Always got to check on what's going on around us. Then we're going to talk about death and dying, which is what I was talking about. It's a bit taboo. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how the environment, what's around you, plays a role into your development. Peace and love, Freddie. Fred Words in the building. But yeah, y'all, without further ado, let's get into the first topic. And just know, if y'all have any, please throw them in there. Let me know what is going on with y'all. What's the word? So, when it comes to at least current events and what's been going on news-wise, I haven't really been keeping up much with what's been going on around me. The only few things that I've gotten to hear about is I've been keeping up with, of course, what's going on with 
not only like an unemployment boost, but still, they're still doing their thing within the Senate and stuff. I, it's it's gotten to a point. It's become such a joke that I'm. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, you know, they'll see how much of a detriment that can end up really becoming. But I've been keeping up on what they're doing with that a little bit. Also, the only other few things that I've heard about in the news besides of course the biggest thing is the election. The biggest thing. That's gonna be that's gonna be the biggest thing for the like I said, past Wednesday for the whole month, if not even longer. Even after the fact. But I've been noticing more people speaking on what was going on down in um, Africa, Nigeria, and things in, in that particular pace with the protest and how that was going. And of course, I'm not a fan, or I don't really, I really am not a, a person of really watching sports like that. But I couldn't, I, I just guessed because I wasn't keeping it to, in, you know, attention to it. But I know my neighbors and a lot of surrounding people um, we're celebrating, you know, the Dodgers winning um, the World Series. I was chilling in my room, and all I heard was, <laughs> and then fireworks is going off. And I was just put together. I was just like, hmm, I wonder what is that about? And then I must have, and I put them two and two together. I'm like, oh, Dodgers must have won the World Series without even looking it up. But, you know, shout out to those who do watch. Like I said, I don't, but. It's all good and well. Another thing, too, that I've been seeing, and I got you. I see you in here, thorough. I've been seeing talks about, you know, things not really returning back to what we would call normal or a particular norm. At least this is from Anthony Fauci. He's saying that, you know, from the virus, things will not return until about around 2022. So that's another thing just to keep into mind and how long that would end up taking and how that will impact impact the U.S. and just the world even more. Well, particularly the U.S. because of Anthony Fauci. But let me see what we got up in here, too. Thorough so said, said the misleading Prop 20 labeled labeled save gig economy jobs. Mm. Let me see. I want to know a little bit more about that. It's, it's presented by Uber and Lyft. Yeah, because I've been hearing about it. I thought that was Prop Prop 22 or something. I may be, yeah, I may be off because I haven't really been on that as well, too. But let me see. They're presented as favored by gig economic economy workers. Saying that they wanted to stay as independent contractors. Mm. That's interesting, my man. When it comes when it comes to that, I can I can see why people. I think it was twenty because I remember twenty two. Here, look, I'm over here just guessing. I'm over here guessing. I can literally. I'm right here by the computer, y'all. So I can just look this up. And also shout out to those two who be watching this, who's watching this now, but who also be watching this later. Lyndon, what's up, brother? How you doing? Let's look in here. So he said, let's see, we saying, I was saying, I believe it's Prop 22, my G. So let's see what, what Google says. Prop 22. Yeah, my G. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's Prop 22. And it's talking about how they want to preserve those ride-sharing type of places and like you said keeping a lot of those contracts together so let me see so prop two yeah so california prop 22 the app-based drivers as con contractors and label labor policies initiative is on the ballot and if you spoke yes that means you support um app-based transportation and deliveries as independent contractors and if no that means that there will be a California Assembly bill that will be used to decide whether those people who are doing those ride shares and are those of those apps will be considered um, contractors or independents. So we're all good. Oh, you're good, bro. I had a feeling like as much as I'm not, I've not really been giving my energy to a lot of the, the props and a lot of people heavily pushing and really the, um, pushing it down people's throats with like voting and other things but just doing 
your due diligence. Like I've seen this so many times in commercials, so that's why the number stuck in my head. Plus 22, I know numerology, so like two, no, I don't know numerology, but I'm learning more numerology, but just all these consecutive numbers have a really another meaning to it too. But yeah, let me see, you said those jobs will, will still exist though. Uber just don't wanna make them full-time employees. Yeah, because that's that's a really that's a really good point um because if they do that they gotta provide so much more so much more things with that you know i mean i know they're at some places for a different like at base stuff they're starting to try to apply for so that they can have health benefits and all these other different things but that's what they're that's why they're trying to do they want to keep it independent so you have to look for other places to be able to be covered through a lot of stuff yeah, so yeah, they don't want to pay a minimum wage or allow them to unionize. Yeah, it's easy, man. Easy, easy service, easy labor, man. Shoot, a lot of a lot of that's a lot of those those ride apps. I'm I'm actually actually was an independent contractor for one of those ride apps a while back, but not for particular Uber or Lyft, but for for DoorDash doing on um, food deliveries. And in my in my own perspective from that experience. I, I'm not a fan of really driving and going around back to forth place to place, but just the the immediate costs and the pros and cons from doing it. For me, it had so many more cons than it had pros. I literally would be walking away really with little to maybe like 150 in profit for the whole, what, month? And it was like certain ways that you can get scheduled and put in. So it was... It was very difficult. It's not anything fixed. You had to literally go in there and, and try to input times that people were not using. So it's not like, oh, I can work whenever I want. It it come it goes off of a first come, first serve, but also priority or seniority basis. But I don't know how it, it runs now, but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really a fan of, of doing a lot of that stuff, but it works for some people. So, I mean, if it does, it does. But yeah, brother, it's it's a thing, man. But thank you for sharing that and getting me on that. The other thing that I've also seen, and if there's more, y'all throw some more in there. I'm loving this back and forth. The other thing that I I just happened to just see about 30 minutes ago is that um it's a hurricane that's hitting Louisiana, Louisiana but it's a Category Two, and they're calling it Hurricane um is it Zeta or Zeta and once again man on the coast over there they getting hit with these you know hurricanes again like I said before which this is a selfish plug I also have another channel on YouTube where I do explore a lot more spiritual things and I, I did somewhat of a wrap up not a wrap up but really about nine things that 2020 has been showing us so far one of them I was talking about how mother nature is um, is alive and how it's responding back to what's going on and I'm not surprised by a lot of this going on with hurricanes as well as floods going on around different places and in fires still. So there's just so much more within 2020, this year of being able to see things clearly. There's a lot going on as well as some people call this the age of Aquarius. So a lot more is being said and done and seen right in front of you. So there's no more taking it for oh it's, it's fake like it's it's right in front of your face if you're not noticing it right now but yeah other than other than that news wise that's all that i've really seen y'all so i've only been just hearing a lot more of course about the election the big push to go out and vote there's people who do be talking about voter suppression you have not possibly being back to some type of norm by um from anthony fauci until about 2022 then we had to talk about um prop 22 and then i'm uh, speaking on you know dodgers you know cool and then the hurricane that's hitting right now, Louisiana. But mostly that's all that I've come to see and know and hear when it comes to current events wise. If there's any more y'all, please throw it down in the comments and we
we keep this going as well as you're always more than welcome to jump on a live with me because it's just not only me here but it's us as a community and i would love to see y'all's faces and be able to hear from y'all so more than welcome at any time to come and jump on with that let me see the brother came again and said what do you think happened in the time from election results leading to the inauguration hmm. so you're talking about you said what do i think that happens in between that time when someone is elected and then when it gets to the inauguration hmm it's a great question you know that's all that's all we can do is speculate on that there is like no hidden proof unless i'm like there just straight up seeing what's going on but i would say with my perspective when it comes to the president and how the this nation is ran which is ran like a business that's why america is they call it a business because we have a what a president a president is a ceo of a company so that's how it's being ran so at times i don't feel like there's someone that's elected there's somebody who's the person is selected to be the boss selected to be the president selected to be the ceo of this business nobody's ever voted in when you think about that when you own a business and you are the entrepreneur the ceo of that business you've already selected yourself because of the fact that this is the business you've grown and then the next person that you want to pass it down to is not usually through a vote you select the next person to take on your company or if not you have somebody to continue that legacy so when it comes to me when i'm understanding your question of like what happens in between election um results leading into the inauguration the only thing i can speak on that is depending on whoever on other both sides get in there's gonna be some issues there's gonna be there's gonna be a number of issues i'm not calling out i'm not calling out that there there's gonna be a race war that people are, are speaking on and when i hear that term a lot i get i get very i'm i'm very intrigued because if that if that was a thing or i should say if that's saying that that's going to start one if people do their history literally if you do your history you will say civil war whatever may end up being hey cha cha how you doing but if you do your history there's been a race war from the inception of colonialization the inception it's all it's been a race war if we want to speak in that particular case you can say civil war whatever it may be but it's been like that for the inception so if someone says it's like oh we're on the brink of a race war that's already been going on throughout history and i mean even earlier within history at least from my perspective of being you know black african-american whatever you want to end up calling it that's been going on from the beginning with slavery and then and even later on with um the tulsa homa um tulsa oklahoma bombing back in 1920 what 1929 around 1921 around in that area that whole thing there there's literally um i know there's different rights that happen throughout the race rights and like i forgot it, the red summer like there's there's a number of different things before that's happened way when I mean, even within our own supposed American history, like you said, a civil war. So this is not a new concept. I think what's going on is because of so much stress and so much fear around where the world is moving. Because as humans, we need to have a grasp on what's happening within our immediate reality. So if we don't know what's going to happen next or who does what, and we put ourselves in these what ifs and we continue to put up multiple what ifs, we're going to start stressing ourselves out. So that's what's going on. People are really stressing themselves out because it's like, oh, this happens, this happens, this happens. And they're starting to fabricate, if not create this reality or this fear that's not even here yet. And then that's when they'll start pushing it out, either intentionally or unintentionally. So when it comes to that, again, back to your question with what happens from the election into the inauguration. There's going to be a big uproar, at least, of people being upset on either side. It doesn't matter. Since all we focus on is just only the left and the right. 
what you're talking about Democrat, Republican. We don't be looking at new, you know, not new age party. We're not looking like at the independent or all these other different folks, the Green Party and everybody else that comes in between in all of that. Which, I mean, at the end of the day, man, I'm not a proponent or a person that's really into all of these politics, but I still watch it. And I, when I mean watch it, I definitely make sure I'm aware of like what's really going on within that realm so I can have a understanding to how to move. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm over, I'm really here working on myself and that's what I can and that's who I can and I can influence those that are around me. So when it comes to something that's over and beyond that, now that's, that's a whole, whole different story where I feel, I shouldn't even say I feel, I know that if we come at it from a different perspective of how we're doing it now, history has shown us what has been the result of us doing the same things over and over. So I've gotten to the point where it's like, I've seen that in history. I've noticed what they've been doing in history. And we're still doing the same things year out of year to little or no results. So when people talk about unifying, that's literally it there. For self, not in a selfish way, but for self and for your people. And that's really how you do that. There's multiple ways to play this game and playing this system. Buying into the system. Partly buying into the system. Or not engaging in the system, period. You know, that's actually, that is actually an option too. But I get it, that's the most sacrificial option. That's the, the option that is, that's very uncomfortable. But it's an option. So my whole thing is that I'm not pushing people like, oh, you do what you want to do at the end of the day. But don't be surprised if nothing happens again. Or if something does happen, it doesn't happen in the way that you want it to happen. And the reason why is, have you been watching history? Have you been really seeing how things are moving at work and at play? So... It's all that's up it's all up on y'all. What's up, brother Brandon? How you doing, my G? Welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays, my G. Alright, let's see what you got, Thurl. But yeah, if I'm rambling, y'all, y'all can tell me that. Look, at the end of the day, this is just my perspective. You take it with a grain of salt. I'm not over here trying to say like, oh, my way's only right way. No, it's not. This is what's coming from off, you know, from my from my heart, from my soul, and how I really feel and know a lot of things. So that's it's on y'all to take that. But let's see. Got another one thorough. Appreciate you. Do you see Joe Biden as a better pathway? He for sure favors internet censorship and maybe uh, maybe more than Trump. Honestly, brother, I don't I don't favor any of these dudes at all. Character wise, no. Policy wise, no. My whole thing is that at the end of the day, and it's and it's so sad that this is a concept or it is actually a phrase or word for it. And it's been going on for years and years. That's what I'm talking about, really, this insanity of stuff is, you know, picking the lesser of two evils. My whole thing is, why they gotta be evils? And why do we have to pick the one that's lesser of? I mean, if you go back in both, any anybody who gets into politics, you can go and dig up and you can find so much. I get people, we're, we're human at the end of the day. We're not perfect, we make mistakes. But if you go back and check and do your, not history, but do your research and knowledge on people, you'll find out that what the things that they were fighting for or whatever they're doing politically wise were completely opposite to what they're doing now. And, they, and they've been doing this for years and years on end. And guess what? To no change at all when they said they're going to be bringing all of that. So with Joe Biden, bro, no. Well, me personally, no, I, I don't. Don't trust the dude. He always gave me a weird feeling from the beginning. Did not care. As well as if you look back in his history, at least for me, because of the fact I'm black, African American experience that I've lived, he literally was talking about literally how he doesn't want um his daughter and them living in the jungles or stuff with like savages. So like calling black people, you know, that particular stuff. Like, come on now. And then his whole condescending talk back way when talk about if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Like, come on, that's a slap in the face, at least for black people. But at the end of the day, we're gonna still go to the polls and do what we do. 
that's my only thing is like think it's just thinking critically i get it at the end of the day we gotta we gotta make a choice but my whole thing is just think critically about everything that's all yeah we aren't organized enough yes g we're not we're not because look at how many how many of us is there in the world versus how many is in politics and stuff how many farmers do we know that we have in this world how many mechanics do we know we have in this world how many architects how many engineers how many literally brother we have so many different people from various parts around the world if not various races that have skill sets that we can all benefit from and be able to build if we were organized enough so if we don't like what we're given and if we're given a side of poison in one hand and then a side of poison with a little bit of ranch in another hand and said that we only can pick between these two guess what since i'm organized enough and i have enough people to work with me i'm gonna go ahead and just give my own option i don't like what you're giving me i'm i can take it or leave it and guess what i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna go do something else i don't have to buy into this but this is this is just like i said this is my own understandings on stuff so i mean i can be triggering people whatever that may end up being but if if you're mad at the end of the day that's something you just got to check in with you know so that's that's i mean that's just one thing i'm just saying yeah organizers get whacked yeah in this world for sure bro what would happen if nobody voted bro that's what i'm waiting for bro that's what i'm waiting for dude there look it this is what i will say and then i definitely want to you know continue on but this is really dope so i appreciate y'all but that's why that's the option there to not do that but the thing is we're programmed exactly the illusion of choice bruh i'm gonna get on that point and i loved how you just brought up the illusion of choice so we're programmed so much to the fact that there has to something has to be done we're being patriotic we're being an american if we go and do these things but we're forgetting the fact too that with a lot of people shaming as well as scaring you into voting and other things and saying that you're you know your ancestors and people died for the right to vote and all these other different natures people forget that also a lot of them also did it for the opposite too it's just so that you can have that particular right to either vote or not vote but we've been conditioned to keep doing that because we we think we are being patriotic we're feeding into the system so eventually the government and stuff is going to give us what we want and if you haven't seen that through history majority of the time that is not the case and that's why we could keep complaining at the end of the day about we can't trust the government can't do this you can't do that but we continue to go back and back into it so i mean i get it but if we really wanted to be strategic about not voting or at least holding back the vote to really use it we would have to organize once again we would have to organize we would have to unify and be like you know what the only way we're gonna vote is if we get such 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 and such and such so all of the people of this race all the people of that race all the people of this race we're not gonna vote for such and such we're not gonna even participate until blah 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 happens and I know the other side of the coin will be like, well, then, you know, so now you got other people speaking for your own voice and you're not being able to speak in your own voice. Technically, you are. And your voice is what you've offered me is not what I want. If you want to offer us something better, you want us to play into this, then give me something better. And that's a part of a tactic to unify and to use that. While we have folks doing that, going in with a voting, we have other folks organizing and creating different options for us to take where we don't have to do any of this but it's working on multiple fronts to create something better for not only just us as a community but as a world and as a state which a lot of it i don't feel is united it's very divided right now this is the divided states of america kkk that's three k's if you do not know but Bro, I would love to see what would happen if nobody voted. That would be like, what if we all decided, and I've heard people speak on this a lot of times, what if we decided just not to go to work? What would happen? Nobody went to work. How much of an impact would that have? 
how much would that really show and tell? But once again, we're brought in, once again, you said, with this illusion too of choice. And the whole thing with the illusion of choice is, and I do it, and I've done it, I mean, with kids, but you give them the autonomy, but you give them these multiple choices that you choose from, but that's all that you can choose from. That's all that you can choose from. You can't say like, oh, what if I'm gonna go with that? Be like, well, no, it's not within this realm right here for you to choose. You can only go with this guy, that guy, that woman, and that person. This is all that you can choose. Nah, but what if I wanna go with the person that's over there? Nah, it's only right here. So that whole idea, man, of illusion of choice, I feel you. We stuck in that. But if there's anything else, y'all, I'm gonna come down. Not 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 trying to go no too much more into that, but I appreciate the topics and the comments of that coming up. But let's move to the next topic, which once again, some people think of as a taboo and, you know, very touchy subject. But let's get into the whole thing about death and dying and how that can be seen and viewed and heard and felt. So the first, I mean, the first thing when you hear about death or you hear about dying, you think of something that's very sad, very tragic. Something that is, can be sometimes out of the norm because it can happen unexpectedly. And with the death and with thinking about dying, it it makes you feel, I mean, sad, sometimes frustrated. Other times when you think about um, dying, you feel lost. You feel like there's nothing else left to end up doing. That's where you lead to the whole idea of negative thoughts, suicide, such and such. But in that same aspect of thinking about, you know, death and think about dying, it just reminds you that are you truly living for each and every moment throughout the day? And it does touch back on what do you want to leave as a legacy and what that reminder of, you know, things naturally change and things come and go at times can provide stress but it is a beautiful reminder that you know nothing is going to be the same forever and that you will leave on and you will progress on to the next thing within <clears throat> within life or within this force reincarnation whenever you want to end up calling it but it's always a daily reminder to just really appreciate every moment and to appreciate what you have around you and the people that's around you and all of the you know necessities and things that you have so i don't i don't view i personally don't view death as really a sad thing at all it's it's really a part of the circle of life <laughs> that's it that's it it's a part of the circle of life that's how things come you're born you live you continue through life and then guess what to end that circle you end up you know you die and what we've done especially within the western culture is we have dramatized and we have really desensitized and fear and invoked fear in people when it comes to think about you know death and dying and i think of, of it as a natural progression in life and being able to use that to appreciate the life and experience that you're having right now and i get i get why that's a thing because if you're able to have a person a group of people a whole unit if not a whole space and place of people to be fearful and to be afraid of death and what's happening next you already can have a big impact and influence on how that person thinks feels and moves in this world and that becomes a big wall and barrier for people to to get over and to overcome because <clears throat> at the end of the day I need some water too but this is not worse better it's the mind that you just 
Death, once again, it's a part of that cycle. It's that reminder. It's not meant. It's not meant to keep anybody down. It's not meant to make people feel, you know, so discouraged. It's really just to remind you that whatever you've been put on here on this earth to do and what you're doing, do it to the best or do it better each and every day as much as you can. And don't forget that it's precious. It's life is precious. When you see a flower growing in the spring, it's a beautiful thing. And once it continues, you see that as once the seasons go around, it dies out. But guess what? That reminds you of that cycle and just know that something newer is being rebirthed. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, like I said, fearing, but it's really coming to the awareness of knowing that death and thinking about dying and how that can be. That's a nat that's a natural thing. Even if we take it back to, if you wanna say, Homo sapiens back way when hunting gatherers and how that all was in our fight and flight, which comes from the primitive part of our mind, which is the um, amygdala, and those reptilian responses, they were those things were put there because of the fact that at any moment that that can happen. But those responses were used to help to survive to be able to live and appreciate the next day now what we've done with it like i spoke on earlier is with those responses is we've overused them to a point where we get ourselves in a cycle of holding ourselves down to get out of that we keep ourselves in a very high situational and stressful state to a point where once again you can you really don't stop and smell the flowers you don't stop to really appreciate what is around you because of the fact that you can think like man next day could be that could be it for me and i don't know what's going to happen after that the once again the what ifs the scenarios and all of that comes into that play and it makes it very hard for people to really get beyond and go further beyond that and i'm not saying that literally that's what everybody's thinking about every single day or not but for those who do, it's, once again, like I said, it's just putting you within that box and not being able to break out of that to know that it's okay to have that as a natural process of thinking to be like, you know, one day I will die. You know, I am going to be moving on to whatever the next realm or whatever the next life that it may be. But right now in this moment, I really need to, to create what I want to leave or have and to put my influence in and I know a lot of people is not able to get to that point that's why it's very important to have conversations like that to be able to be around people who are willing to have those conversations and walk you through a lot of that because once you're able to <clears throat> break out of that mindset but keep it as something aware that it is normal and is natural or normal the way we think of but it's a natural thing You'll be able to push forward with it. You'll be able to appreciate life more and be able to treasure the moments that you've had with past relatives who may have passed away or even really come back to understand more of yourself and more of your ancestry and more of those who have left before you and more so just really bring that gratitude into your everyday life. So when thinking about death and dying, it is a natural thing to think of because it is a natural process within this cycle of life. So don't be afraid. Break from that. Find a group of people and just be grateful and show appreciation for it. moments that you get. Every moment that you get to breathe. Every moment you get to move and walk. Because once again, you never know when. But it's a beautiful thing. It is. It's still a beautiful thing at the end of the day. But if y'all have anything on that, please throw them in the comments. Like I said, if anybody wants to come in and speak on their perspective on what they think of, you know, when they hear death or when they hear dying. Like I said, I know it's a taboo thing to really speak on. But I think it's very important and it's very vital that we do. Because if we don't speak about things and people do have these thoughts, you know, not saying like to, you know, like, oh, yeah, man, I'm a suicide. But more so like it just comes across. It might be a random thought and be like, oh, yeah, what if I die? How would I do that? There's people that literally do 
go to workshops because they're feeling less of motivation or anything and there's questions there to talk about like you know if i were to you know if i were to die today you know what would i say about myself or how how would i write my now obituary but also what what would i be able to put down that i've been able to do and left behind and what it does it creates in that mind like i talked about really appreciation what what you know life offers being able to keep yourself focused and really to continue to push towards okay what do i want to leave and create in this life so just know it's a normal thing if y'all got some please throw them in here but what i'm gonna do now is we're gonna shift over to the last topic if anybody has any other topics you can throw them in there too but we're shifting over to the last topic which is how your environment plays a role into your development and that lets you know you know what that is so <clears throat> when it comes to your environment how that plays a role into your development people think of the two ideas of nature versus nurture and when you think of nature you think of <laughs> rather talk about it now than I had um, that I have the chance exactly you can't talk about you can't talk about death and dying if you're already gone and then you try and come back this is not among us where you playing the game and then you'll floating ghosts be able to still communicate and do stuff but I feel you on that bro I feel you now when it comes to the nature versus nurture when we think of um, nature we're not thinking of like the natural environment that's around us we think of biology we think of what our genes or genetic makeup has an influence on us to, you know, hered our heredity, our genes passed down, has an influence on us as beings. And then we think of nurture, which we think of the outside world in our immediate environment and now how that has effect on us. Your boy, Johnny B. Loving in the building. Good to see you, brother. Welcome. What's the word? Wednesday, my G. And we talk about how those two play a role within your own development as a person and um, the nature versus nurture. Today, we're going to speak mostly on the nurture part, which is of your environment, how that does work on your development. And most of us know the phrase or the term of I'm a product of my environment. And the reason why that's such a famous, or if not really a wise saying is, that's why we have this whole thing of a hood mentality or we have this I came from the gutter or I'm from the projects and there's really more so a lot of lines towards in poverty but we can also apply that not only to that to to poverty but we can apply that to any part of state that you start from that if you start within an environment and this is this is where I also get a perspective from from observation, from looking out within nature and watching it nurture folks and not only just the, just really looking out into nature and learning more about it. But it's a it's a it's a great example of, you know, when you're planting flowers or you're growing seeds, you're cutting the grass, trees, birds, whatever you see around you and you notice that if the soil is not viable for you to grow anything in, then you're gonna have little to nothing happening within that. And the reason why is because the environment is not fitted. It's, it's goodness to fit is not helpful for, I was, we'll just say onions to grow. But if you were able to take that onion and put it in another environment, where it would be able to thrive and continue then you will see the results of that and how that would have a change in effect on the onion being able to grow now coming in and speaking on the aspect of us as people and human beings you see how your environment has an impact not only on what you learn observationally but also on the way that you think the way that you feel the re natural resources and resources that you have available at your, you know, to at your disposal, as well as the the people that are around you. So all of that together comes to add in a part of. 
creating who you are as a person. So if you're in a negative environment, you're living in a place, not only nine times out of the 10, but majority of the time, if you are around in something that's very negative that hinders your growth, it's going to hinder you in some type of way, shape or form. I'm not saying that's for everybody. We say there's exceptions to the rule. There are some people that are just able to grow within something so rugged, so what we can say not goodness of a fit for them as a person, but they're able to persevere and go beyond that. And I feel that that's a very small few when it comes to stuff because you can get caught in the rut of what I say when I'm speaking of really more particular negative, you think of the hood mentality and being in the projects. We even think of the word project in itself. We think of science projects and things that we've done. It's something that's created through not only those steps, the scientific method, but it's something that's been created. And when you think of a project that's been created, they've created this part where they have people of low economic status experiencing poverty and you see the outcomes of what that happens. And if people are in that, that mindset, as well as that environment, their likeliness to really excel and go further and to be able to not only worry about the basic needs on, if we look at it as from a pyramid of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you'll see that there's, there's really much little to no room for them to continue to push forward on that high, that hierarchy of the, of the pyramid. But say that we're not in that particular environment. Say we're actually in an environment that that is at least we will say the medium where you have enough that what you need, you have a moderate amount of resources, basically be able to have, you know, places to go get food. There's no food deserts. At least there's some type of healthy options, but there's still, of course, you know, yo, McDonald's, KFCs, all these other fast food places. You have a good amount of water resource. You have decent schools. You have a decent community. We have little to little, I mean, a certain amount of crime, but it's not overly amount. As well as you're in a, a good space when it comes to your family dynamic, your household. And all of that together gives a greater understanding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The projects are an experiment. Exactly, G. That's what I'm definitely speaking on. It's meant like that. I mean, we can go way back when of when that all became, but I'm I'm still learning more as I go, like I said. Buffet Destroyer George in the building. Sensei doing his thing. But once again, if we have that median and we have some person that's there versus the person that's in what well, we would say a poor condition, a poor environment. We have someone that's least in a medium environment. You know, what are the, you know, you see the odds and the chances of them being able to push forward and grow from that environment is a lot more likely than a person who is within a poor environment in a condition. And a lot of this that I'm speaking on, it's not new. This is literally all... This is all nothing new under the sun. This has been talked about a number of times. That's why people speak on poverty. That's why we have different sayings like brother just talking about when I spoke on the hood mentality and how that all together processes of what we've seen going on history wise. We were living everything that's already been going on. That's why it's already a thing. Now, now what we're doing now is we're taking the information that we've learned from these different environments and then we're figuring out, okay, we've seen what it's done in the past. We see what it's doing presently, but now what are we going to do to help impact and change the future? And that's what we have. That's what we're, we're at right now is figuring that out. But yeah, brother, like as much as I'm not a red dude, like I, you know, got to coordinate. Shout out to MC Zero and Sam for the shirt, for the swagger. But yeah. Um, you just see the you see the like you see you see the the differences already of the ability for one person who is at least in a decent middle environment to be able to grow their their growth is going to be at a higher percentage than someone who's down at um at a lower 
and then if we go beyond that and further that somebody who's been set up with all that they need they have great resources they have great foods they have you know great schools great environment at home as well as you know loving parents and a family to be able to build them you're going to be able to see them mold themselves even much more and be able to have that mindset that I can do all these things because I have this support and I have all these in these necessary resources around me for me to be able to succeed. So their likability to be able to succeed <clears throat> is far greater than the previous two medium to the low poor environments. And once again, like I said, there's always different exceptions and parts into each each one. And it's not only just those levels. We have so many in, in between levels. <clears throat> but it's it's important to keep that in mind that not only just how you were born and genetically made up, but what is around you, the people around you, the resources and everything that is there with you, it has such a big impact, not only on your physical, but like you said, the psychological, the mental, it also has a big impact on your behavioral, also your spirituality. It, it has such a major impact on your character without you, without you even knowing. It could be an unconscious thing. But, shoot, if I wanted to, say for example, if I'm in an environment where I wanted to learn more about, you know, just say I wanted to learn more about swimming, but I live in a desert. And then the people that live in the desert don't like water they speak heavily bad on water they demean me for wanting to learn how to swim and be somewhere near the water um the foods have nothing to do with water and so on and so forth my like ability to be able to learn how to swim or even want to swim anymore will be definitely lower because of the fact of the environment that I'm in. I can't swim because I'm in the desert. And even if I wanted to swim, I can't because also the other people that are around me, they speak badly about swimming. They don't like water. And when I bring it up, there's always an issue. And then in the whole surrounding environment, is just like, we don't like water at all. So it's like, what can I do? How and what would I end up doing at that point? Do I just go ahead and just fall right into because the environment that I'm at? Or do I push myself in some way, shape, or form to be able to go outside of that and go to the environment that is going to be beneficial for me to learn how to swim and be able to do what I want with the water? I know it's just a random example, <clears throat> but that's like, once again, when I do a lot of this stuff, it does flow from the top and how I really, you know, how I really feel and, and come at the moment with what's coming to me. But... We just think about it from from that whole from that aspect is it is a factor it is a variable of how the environment is going it plays a role in your development and growth as a person you can't say it doesn't because it's it's a very foreseeable if not a seeable thing around you so with that and I mean, I can have, have more on that. But if anybody else has anything that they want to speak on when it comes to this or any of the previous topics, you're more than welcome to jump in. And I do invite you to come in and talk because we got about six minutes left. But really more so me putting the last bits of this together. That's how... The whole thing of me talking about current events, of knowing what's going on in your environment, comes to not only the topic of, you know, death and dying, and how that can have an impact on your aspect of view of what's around you, but then also knowing how the environment has a play and a role on influencing you. So full circle, all of these things is just bringing to your awareness of how anything is everything and everything is anything from my perspective and how it's all truly interconnected but it's, it's so funny that that song came up but 
if y'all have any comments, please throw them here. Um, I really, that's really all I have right now that's left from this talk. It's not much that really wants to come out of my mind about this, but just know that, yeah, your environment is very important to your, and to your growth and your development as a person. That death and dying is not always this very sad and taboo thing, but it is a beautiful process of this cycle and this circle of life. And then how your current events are the current events and things that are happening around you are very important to keep an eye on so that you can keep a word to the street, a ear to the street, eyes to the street, all your senses to what is going on around you to be aware. What's up, brother? Yeah, G, like we're towards we're towards the end of the show, um wrapping up, my man. And I mean I went I went on a spill today it was is definitely from here and here and there when it came to stuff but i'll you know i'll do some summaries in the after show but somebody if it's an after show somebody join with me we can speak on this man Ooh, let's see all right dude. i just resigned from my job paying attention to um what i'm giving my energy to Ooh, yo bro much respect to you my man and just once again just talking about that brother you know being able to really focus your energy on where it's really needed and i feel and i feel which i should say i know it is very important right now in these days and times that we're being able to focus on where we're putting our energy towards and knowing what type of things are distracting and hindering us from getting closer to our vision and our goal of what we want to bring into this life so the whole aspect again go back to death and dying now I'm back on the wheel real quick is really knowing what you want to leave before you go and knowing if that's something that's there in the in the blocking your way to be able to leave something behind for the for the future then you gotta either you cut it out or you're gonna keep continue continue suffering with it and really not keeping yourself in that mindset to keep pushing forward what you want you're gonna have this this other weight on your shoulder that we already got a whole number of different things that we all carry on our shoulders every single day but you're gonna have this extra one that's on there when you could get rid of it but yeah more time to do the things you love exactly johnny be loving look at you exactly but you know brother i hope and i know things will be well with you man you know always always you know check in with me my g you know i'm here for it man whatever whatever you're doing man i support all the time bro whenever i can and hopefully you got yourself set up with whatever your next move may be and financially how that goes since we are in this system and that's how things do money doesn't equate to happiness it never does and it never will finding purpose is what we need to end up doing yes yes g exactly he going in johnny leroy's in the building killing it right now with what he's telling us but what you talk about right now is just like this part right here. I know that there's something greater I'm told. That it takes moments to show where it goes. Keeping the feeling abstract to the cold. So be gold and tell them I know that there's something greater I'm told. That it takes moments to show where it goes. Keeping the feeling abstract to the cold. So be gold and tell them I know. So like if you know something is good for you, you know you know what you want to love to end up doing, go for that mess man yeah sometimes we need to give something up for another thing to happen yeah that's 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 a very good point literally i can be if i really if i'm carrying five to ten different oranges in my hand but then i decide i want to get rid of the other oranges in my hand because i've been waiting to get a different type of fruit <clears throat> i gotta let that go and then before i know it boom i got like another five ten apples that's in my hand so if you don't initially drop something that you're already holding on to it, you literally don't have room for anything else to come towards you. <clears throat> yes, it's scary not knowing the unknown. It is. It definitely is. And there's nothing wrong with that. But 
as you move to look towards that, you'll find out, you know, that everything is meant for a purpose and things will come up and happen with that. Okay? What's up with that flow? Bro, it just literally, it works, my G. It, it just works that way. But other than that, y'all, it's about to shut me off. I've been your brother, your brother Avis. This has been episode 15 of What's the Word Wednesdays. I will see y'all next Wednesday. Other than that, keep doing what you need to. Keep striving. Love what you do and do what you love. Peace and one love.